Lenny. Okay. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So you know that you know that gave me an opportunity to have a wonderful word with him. Let me turn this music off so they won't be fussing with me. All right. I have Facebook Live on right now, and now I'm going to turn on my recording here on the conference call and mute everybody's line, and we're going to get started. Man, man. This call is being recorded. All right. Let's see, get my camera right. On Facebook, Facebook is live. I hope I look nice enough on Facebook. I got to prep a little bit since I'm looking at myself. Amen, amen. <laughs> welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Mm -mm -mm. Happy New Year. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Happy New Year. Welcome to the first Sunday School Lesson edition of the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call in the brand new year 2017. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're in the new year. Hallelujah. And we're going to start this year off with a wonderful and glorious Sunday school lesson coming from Psalms 33. Psalms 33. Now, I don't know if I've even said it. Oh, I'm just so just elated to be in the new year. I am Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. And I tell y'all, I just feel so blessed. I don't know about you. You should just be elated and blessed to see 2017, a new year, the beginning of something totally new, a shift, a time, a change. All of that is in place now. And you, you have 365 more days to write your story. And let his story become your story. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for letting us see another year. We can truly say like the psalmist said, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad. And it is a day Oh, hallelujah, we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. God, we give you all the glory. We give you all of the praise. You're so worthy, God, to be praised. Thank you, Lord, for letting us see another day in a brand new year. Our minds can't even fathom that we would see 2017. Thank you, Lord. We ask you now, God, bless us as only you can. Anoint us afresh as only you can. Give us your grace and your mercy as only you can, God. Forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. Forgive us, God, for things that we have not completed yet, God. Forgive us for things that we knew we should have done and we didn't do them. Forgive us, God, for things that we knew we shouldn't have done and we did them anyway, God. Please, Lord, shower your forgiveness on us. And then, Lord, help us to enter this new year knowing that you have forgiven us and that we ought to forgive ourselves. And then, Lord, help us to forgive anyone that has offended or hurt us. 
And let us not go into this new year, God, with any bitterness, malice, or even guilt or shame. Let us walk in your spirit. Let us be covered in your righteousness. Let us enjoy your peace. That your love may outflow from us and be a blessing to everyone we come in contact with. We thank you for this, oh God. We praise you for it and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ooh, God, you got me up in there praying. I wasn't planning to go there and pray, but you took me there, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If you will, <coughs> turn with me to Psalms 33. We're starting a new series in the Sunday School, International Sunday School lesson, where we're going to be talking about God and God's creation. And so, as we look at this Psalms 33, we're going to be dealing with praising God for his creation. Praising God, the creator. And in particularly today, we're going to concentrate on the beauty of a worshiping life. The beauty of a worshiping life. So let's turn to Psalms 33. Let's turn to Psalms 33. And I'm trying to decide which Bible I'm going to read it out of first. I think, let's see, let's see which one is this one. Oh, man. I got the Bibles, but I don't know which translation I got. Well, I'm just going to read it. <laughs> Listen to it from whatever translation this is. And I don't have it on the paper. Mercy God. But it says, let the godly sing for joy to the Lord. It is fitting for the pure to praise him. Praise the Lord with melodies on the lyre, making music for him on the ten-string harps. Sing a new song of praise to him. Play skillfully on the harp. Sing with joy for the Lord, for the word of the Lord holds true, and, and we can trust everything he does. He loves, whether it's just and good, the unfailing love of the Lord fills the earth. The Lord merely spoke. And the heavens were created. He breathed the word and all the stars were born. He assigned the sea its boundaries and locked the ocean in vast reserves. Let the whole world fear the Lord. And let everyone stand in awe of him. For when he spoke. The world began. It appeared at his command. Oh, glory, hallelujah. We have to learn to worship the Lord. Ah, oh, hallelujah. We have to understand that the worshiping and praising of the Lord is such an awesome and mysterious thing that it brings a supernatural element into our lives when we worship and when we praise God, when we recognize and realize who he is is and give him all of the praise give him all of the glory that is due him when we worship him 
Oh, hallelujah. When we worship him. A simple definition of worship is to praise and honor God for who he is and all that he has done. When we give him that praise, when we give him that honor, the songwriter says, because of who you are, just because of who you are, God, I'll give you glory. Because of who you are, God, I'll give you praise. We have to learn to give God praise because of who you are. Rick Warren, Rick Warren, in the, in the Purpose Driven Life, he says, our whole purpose for living is to worship the Lord. Worshiping him should be our number one priority. Many people think that working for God is the most important thing. But, but God, God says, okay, you can work for me all you want. But what I really want you to do is worship me. And when you worship me, the work that you do for me becomes so much easier, so uh, less burdensome. You know, that's what he does. Say, come unto me, all ye that are labor and heavy laden, and, 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 and take upon my yoke, and I'll give you rest. I could hear Martha and Mary. Martha coming to Jesus complaining that, that, that Mary is not helping her in the kitchen because Martha is working so hard to serve the Lord and she's complaining and Mary's sitting there worshiping at the Lord's feet while, while Lazarus is just sitting over there being a witness. <laughs> because God had raised him. Jesus had raised him from the dead. And, 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 and here, and here, when Martha complained about Mary, Jesus told her that she's doing the important thing because Mary was worshiping the Lord. We got to, we got to get to the point where we understand how important it is for us to worship the Lord. And so, as we look at this text this morning, the, the key verse is verse, third, verse 6. He says, in verse 6, he says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. God, 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 God spoke a word. That's that, that's that, that, that uh, uh, divine ex exclamation. He declares a thing and there is. He says, let there be. And once he speaks it, there is. And we, we need to understand that that same power that God has to speak a thing into existence, he's given us that power. But we have to speak that power and use that power in faith, in love, and in the spirit. We just can't make our stuff up. We have to speak it according to God's word. Speak those things that are not as though they are. That's what we are supposed to do. And so the key concept that we want to grab from this lesson is that God is worthy of praise and worship because he is the creator of the world. He spoke this thing. And when we look at this text as, as children, I, I like to give a simple, simple breakdown for the children. God created the world by his spoken word. Two, we should rejoice in God and praise him because of who he is. And three, God is awesome. <laughs> and he deserves our praise and our worship. 
He's awesome. He's just awesome. And we deserve, he deserves all our praise and all our worship. Well, the first point I want to pull out this morning is that I, I got two different outlines I deal with in my head. The first one says a call to worship. And that call to worship deals with verses 1 through 4. And then the other point that I have is worshiping God. Worship God because of his works, his word, his works, and his worthiness. So that's, that's one approach that I might be dealing with as I'm talking about this. But then I got some other stuff. I just, I just, I just want to, I want to worship him. I want to, I want the ones to worship in the beauty of his holiness and understand the beauty of being a, a worshiper. There's a beauty in being a worshiper. And most folks, most folks don't understand the concept of being a worshiper. Because when we think about being a worshiper, we think about us being at church. In, in corporate worship, raising our hands, clapping our hands, shouting glory, hallelujah, singing praises unto God. We think of a worshiper as being someone who's a worship leader in a corporate setting. But, but being a worshiper, as we start 2017, being a worshiper only requires you and God. I'm going to say that again. Being a worshiper only requires you and God. You being the worshiper and God being the one that you worship. And when you learn to worship God all by yourself, you don't need nobody else to sing. You don't need nobody else to be in the, with you. You can go into worship anywhere and everywhere you at. Because the presence of God is everywhere. I know I just helped somebody right now. Because you've been waiting to get to church service. You've been waiting to get to corporate worship to worship God. Baby, you don't have to wait for nobody else to worship God. You can worship him yourself. You can call on his name. You can tell how good he's been to you. You can praise him for who he is and what he's done all by yourself. Uh, you can say glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for being God and being God all by yourself. Thank you, God, that you woke me up this morning. Praise your holy name that you clothed me in my right mind. Gave me a reasonable portion of health and strength. Lord, I praise you. Oh, hallelujah. I don't need nobody else. And I surely ain't going to let no rocks cry out for me. I'm going to give him all the praise, honor, and glory myself. Somebody on Facebook ought to be saying, amen, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, because when you realize that worship is just not corporate, but it's personal. And so there's this man named, named Brother Lawrence. He was a monk. And Brother Lawrence learned to practice the presence of God. And he learned how to worship God and worship God all day long. Because this, 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 this is this is this is this is from some of the ways that that, that, that our passage did that that basically summarizes how 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 this this 17th century monk named Brother Lawrence practice the presence of God. He says that he has always been governed by love without selfish views and that having resolved to make the love of God the end of all his actions, he has found reasons to be well satisfied with his methods, that, that he was pleased when he could take up a straw from the ground for the love of God. 
a straw from the ground, he says. Picking it up for the love of God. Seeking him only and nothing else. And not even his gifts. That in order to form a habit of conversing with God continually and refrain all we do to him, we must at first apply to him with some diligence. But that after a little care, we should find his love inwardly exciting. Inwardly exciting us. To it without any difficulty. What he's saying is. When you really start worshiping and practicing. Being in the presence of God. It starts off and may feel a little difficult and a little hard. But after a while. It becomes as natural as breathing. Oh hallelujah. We should learn to worship God like that. Worshiping. It's focusing our attention on God. Listen, 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 listen to verses one and three uh, from 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 the the uh, new the new living translation. Listen to verses one through three of Psalms thirty three. Let the godly, that's the righteous, those who love the Lord, let the godly sing for joy to the Lord. It is fitting. For the pure to praise him. Oh hallelujah. It is fitting for the pure to praise him. That's, that's just awesome. That's, that's, that's verse 1 of this text. If you are pure. If you are godly. It is just fitting for you to praise him. The King James Version says rejoice in the Lord. O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Yo, 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 your worship should be focused. That's where we focus our attention on God. Verse 2 in the King James Version says, Praise the Lord with hearts. Sing unto him with the soldiers and the instruments of ten strength. Sing into, unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. <coughs> the New Living Translation says, Praise the Lord. With melodies on the lyre, make music to him on the ten string harp. Sing a new song of praise to him, playing skillfully on the harp and singing with joy. Last year, we were dealing with a message on the Friday Night Lights program, and Pastor. Helen Love Beers Marquis, and she talked about his song, uh, Friend, and he has a part in the song where he says, oh baby, you, you're all that I need, you more than just a friend, you more than just a friend, and so I grabbed a hold of that song by Beers Marquis, and, and, I, and, I, and I just, it just, a praise came over me about God. And so I sung that same song. Oh, Jesus, you, you got what I need. You're more than just a friend. You're more than just a friend. Oh, Jesus, you, you got what I need. And I started worshiping and praising God because Jesus, you got what I need. Jesus, you're everything that I need. Oh, I may not have a beautiful singing voice. I may can't play a wonderful instrument. But I tell you, I can praise him with what I got. And I can sing to him a glory. Oh, Jesus, you. 
You got what I need. You're more than just a friend. You're more than just a friend. You're an awesome God. You're a wonderful Savior. You're more than just a friend. You're a king and lord and lords. Oh, Jesus, you. I just made that up, y'all. That's called making up a new song. That's called giving him all of the praise. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away because I'm focused. All of my attention on my Savior and my Lord. And that's what worship is all about. Focusing your attention on God. And not only is the beauty of a worshiping life, being a worshiper, focusing your attention on God, it's also Worshiping and expressing our affection for God. See, you, 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 you just can't say the words, I worship you and I praise you. And you don't have any affection, any love, any care behind it. Listen, listen, listen to verses 4 through 7. From, from, I'm going to read it from the King James Version first. He says, he says, For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. And by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth, he gathered the waters of the sea together as a heap. He laid up the depths in storehouses. That's, that's, the, that's the message. I mean, that's the King James. Now let me read it from the New Living Translation. For the word of the Lord holds true, and, all, and we can trust everything he does. He loves whatever is just and good. The unfailing love of the Lord fills the earth. The Lord merely spoke and the heavens were created. He breathed the word and all the stars were born. He assigned the seas its boundaries and locked the ocean in vast reserves. I, I, I love, I love. I love certain singers. I love, I mean, I just, I am a Marvin Gaye lover. I love me some Marvin Gaye. I, 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 I can listen to Marvin Gaye all day. I love Frankie Beverly and Mays, and I can listen to their music all day long. Then you got to excuse me. I, I'm, I'm talking about what I love. Now, I, some of y'all said, but them, them are not gospel singers. I, I said, no, don't, you, don't tell me what they're not. I, I'm telling you what I love. I, I love me some earth, wind, and fire. Oh, man, I listen to me some earth, wind, and fire. Okay? But, but, but now, you say, but, but, but those are secular people. I say, you just keep thinking that. You just keep going there. Because when I listen to their songs, and I, and I, I can just go rattle off songs that they used to sing, that, 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 that blessed my heart, that, that, that gave me a closer walk with God because I could hear their love and their worship for God even in their secular music. That's why when I sometimes listen to, to, to the modern day gospel, I be sitting there going, wait a minute, baby, who you singing about? That ain't the God I know. You just up there making a bunch of noise like a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. But you ain't leading nobody to worshiping and praising God because you are not praising his unfailing love. You're not praising the quality that is so important about God. 
that he's holy, 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 and worthy to be praised. When you start giving people praise, what are you doing? You're looking for their character, their greatness, their wonderfulness, and you can give them praise because of that. And when you really love somebody and they love you back, and I want you to hear me, Jesus loved you first. You didn't choose him. He chose you. And I don't know about you. When I realized that Jesus chose me, my love for him just, just goes overwhelming. And I start thinking about why do I love Jesus? And then I have to sing them songs. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Yes. When you start thinking about that, you start worshiping him and expressing your affection for God. That's, that's the beauty of being a worshiper. And you got to hear what I'm saying to you. I didn't say I was up in church. I didn't say I was up in some big cathedral. I don't, I don't have to be in some cathedral with all the crosses and the beautiful paintings and all of that to worship God, I can be on my back porch. I could be in my bathroom. I could be in my shower. I could be at my desk at work. I could be in my car. But I got to tell you about the car. Sometimes I have to pull over and I say, hold on, y'all. Somebody got to hold my mule because... Because I can't be driving because I'm going to go in the workshop. I'm going in the workshop. And sometimes I just pull up on the side of the road and I get out of my car because God's been so good to me. And I lift up my holy hands. I feel like shouting, John, please, somebody, hold my mule because I got to get my praise on for my God. Because he's been so good to me. And I love him. And I love him. Oh God, I love you. Jesus, I love you. I mean, I just can't talk about praise without giving him praise. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh God. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. Oh, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I give you glory because you're so worthy. Thank you, Lord. You woke me up this morning. Thank you, Lord. You clothed me in my right mind. You gave me a reasonable portion of health and strength. Lord, I praise you. You're worthy, God. Worthy is the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Worthy. Worthy. Because you're holy. Holy. Holy, oh God. And I praise you. And I give you glory. Thank you for loving me when I was unlovable. Thank you, God, for dying for me when I was deep in my sin. Thank you, God, for forgiving me of all of my sins and shortcomings. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul and making me whole. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes. You just got to worship him. Worshippers know how to worship him in the beauty of his holiness. In the glory and honor that is due him. Because he just spoke everything into existence. And when he spoke that word, his word becomes truth. Because he's not like man. He cannot lie. And his very words put creation in place. And when he breathed the word 
He put the stars in the sky. And when he breathed his ruah, his spirit into man, we became a living creation. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, as God breathed on you, have you learned like the woman at the well that we must worship him and worship him in spirit and in truth. Don't let nobody ever tell you it don't take all that to worship the Lord. It takes all of that and more. He's worthy. He's King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. My final point, I told you that Worship is focusing our attention on God. Worship is expressing our affection for God, our affection to God. Finally, worshiping, being a worshiper, is using our ability for God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Worshiping is using our ability for God. We are his workmanship. And he's created us for good works. He's given us skills, talents, and abilities. He's anointed us with hands to do certain things. He's anointed us with feet to go certain places. He's anointed us with a mouth to speak a thing and it comes into existence. He's anointed us with ears so that we can listen to the hearts and souls of a hurting and broken world. And he's given us eyes to see that we might discern what is that good, perfable, perfect, and acceptable will of God. And so with this, we are to use our skills to his glory and to his honor. Listen to verses 8 and 9. Let, the New Living Translation says, let the world, the whole world, fear the Lord. And let everyone stand in awe of him. For when he spoke. The world began. It appears at his command. Worship. Worship, grammatically worship, can be either a verb or a noun. A verb, as a verb, it includes such synonyms as expression and exalting and reverence and glory and respect. That's that awe. That's that fear of God. As a noun, it means adoration and, and devotion and supplication and invocation. But true, holy worship is referencing a reverencing and honoring and paying homage to God. Ceremonies or services express that worship. That makes worship both an attitude and an action. I'm going to say that again. That makes worship both an attitude and an action that accompanies and is motivated by it. All to say, my worship resolves itself in my witness. My worship resolves itself in my witness. The offspring of my worship and my praise for God should come out 
in my attitude towards him and towards his people and how I serve them. My abilities to speak as a preacher, my abilities to operate my mind in a scientific field allows me to show people that my skills, my capabilities are not in and of myself. My education is not about what I earned. It's what the Lord has endowed me with. And I give him all the glory. And I give him all the honor. And I give him praise. When I walk into NASA, I don't take off my godliness. I don't take off my righteousness. I don't check my love at the door. When I go in, the same worship that I had for God before I came to work, I'm still a worshiper at work. And I do all that I do to his glory and to his honor because I'm a worshiper. And I want to do it with excellence because he's worthy of the excellence that I put into whatever he gives my hands to do. So now I can sing like Bishop Paul Martin sings, whatever you're doing, Lord, in this season, don't do it without me. Where you're helping somebody, where you're blessing somebody, whatever you're doing, God, don't do it without me. Because I'm one of your worshipers. And I want to worship you in the beauty of your holiness. And everything that I do, I want to worship you with my skills, with my talent, with my treasure, God. With my time, I want to worship you. Because you're so worthy of all of the praise. I'm going to end this lesson here. I hope this has helped somebody. I hope you've been blessed today that you can think about the beauty of being in a worshiping life. The beauty of being a worshiper. And that you learn to worship the Lord by focusing your attention on God. That you worship him and express your, your affection for God. And then that you worship him by using your God-given ability for the glory of God. Let us pray now the prayer of salvation and a closing prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this word. We thank you, God, that you have shown us through Psalms 33 how to get to the point where we become a true worshiper. Help us to sing a new song. Help us to give you praise. Help us to show you how much we love you, recognizing that you loved us first. Thank you, Lord, for Allowing us to have an attitude of gratitude. Thank you, God. For helping us focus our attention on you. Expressing, God, our affection for you. And then, Lord, helping us to use our ability to your glory and your honor. It is in Jesus' name we pray. We thank you. Now, Lord, we pray the prayer of salvation. We come right now for those that might be listening, Lord, that don't know you in the pardon of their sins, that they might know you for themselves and become a true worshiper. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we confess 
Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that he died on the cross for our sins and that you raised him from the dead. Lord, please forgive us of all of our sins. Please, Lord, send Jesus. We invite you, Jesus, to come into our hearts. Now, Lord, we thank you. Send your Holy Spirit to help us live the life you want us to live. Thank you, Lord, for saving our souls. Thank you, Lord, for making us whole. In Jesus' name, amen. On Facebook, we're going to get off the line, and we'll be over in overtime on the conference call. If you want to join us in the conference call, you're more than welcome to come on the conference call and join in with us. The conference call number is 910-218-0531, 910-218-0531. Goodbye, Facebook. Join us on Overtime, but we'll have some discussion over this word.